It's better to be different than better, right? Everyone's just trying to be better. Well, I have, I have a 10 week kettlebell program with 100 exercises. Well, mine's eight weeks with 400 exercises. Well, that's better. It's not necessarily different though. So, and that's where the real magic lies is, is figuring out how is, how are we going to make this, the, the product or at least the positioning of it different. What is up, fitness fans? Welcome back to the Future of Fitness podcast and interview series. This is your host, Eric Malzone. And this is episode number 114. I talked to Ryan Lee. Do you know that name? He's been around, been around for a long time. He's uh, been in the fitness industry. He is what we deemed the godfather of marketing uh, within the fitness profession. So um, started using funnels before funnels were a thing. And uh, there's a lot of great wealth in here. I mean, he talks about his story and, and Ryan's kind of gone a little dark as far as the fitness industry uh, for a little span of time, but he's back. And I'm really excited to get him on the show and uh, highlight his experience, what he's up to now. And his stories are great. I mean, he's a really good storyteller, um, which is half of marketing, right? Being able to tell great stories. Um, but just the history, the progression of how marketing has gone through the industry and um, the trends that he sees now and what needs to change and what needs to take place to really push the industry into the next level. So it, it was really, really cool. Um, I really enjoyed my conversation with Ryan. He also was on the, uh, the Fitness Blitz radio podcast uh, earlier this year. And no, sorry, this is 2019, uh, about summer, spring last year. So anyway, go look it up. And uh, to my promise, uh, I do have a new review here that I'd like to read out. So Kite Chica, <laughs> I don't know, no idea if I'm saying that right. Right? She says, what I appreciate about the Future of Fitness podcast is the genuine people Eric interviews like Brian Lee. It's not about how many followers you have or how high in the ranks you are. It's about what is happening at every level in the culture of fitness and companies around it. Authentic advice and unique perspectives in each episode. Thank you so much, Kai Chica. And you know what? Um, yeah, I, I don't always look for the biggest names, although Ryan is a big name. Um, what I do look for is things that are going to be really benefit the fitness industry, health industry, wellness industry, things that you can take actionable items from, uh, inspiring stories, and apply right away. And one of the reasons we have Fitness Blitz Radio is it actually allows me to find people um, who maybe have amazing stories and a lot of extreme amount of value to offer, but maybe they're just not found yet. And that brings me a lot of pleasure. So, uh, Kai Chica, thank you for the great review. If you haven't reviewed uh, and subscribed to our podcast, please do so. Go to iTunes or wherever you're listening to this, subscribe, and then go leave us a nice review. Um, just like this, I will uh, definitely read it on air when I see them come through, and maybe you're next. So without further ado, let's get on to it. Episode number 114 with Ryan Lee, the godfather of marketing, has returned, people. Enjoy. And we're live. Ryan Lee, welcome back, man. I appreciate it. It's good to be back. I think it was, it was around six or seven months ago. Yeah. So when we did it, I, we were, I was probably just launching this new company rewind i mean if it if if it went live it had probably been only a couple of weeks so uh yeah, yeah it's i guess we could see kind of how things go seven months later am i still in business is it growing uh <laughs> yeah. you know do i practice what i preach um so i i'm looking forward to just kind of coming back on and and having a good talk and i felt bad because we were supposed to do this twice and i kept postponing because every time yeah you know, when you start something new everyone talks about entrepreneurship is so easy and just, Oh, you just do it. It's, you know, oh, push a button, yeah. man. Every day there's a challenge, but, uh, you just got to keep going through it. So I, I love it. It's fun. And now I'm excited to, uh, to catch up with you and just to try to deliver as much value to, to your listeners as possible. Yeah, absolutely, man. And, and for those listening, um, the interview that we, we did about six or seven months ago is on the fitness blitz podcast. So you can go to fitness professional online. You can find that. And it was, uh, yeah, I, I just listened to it again this morning. And you, you had just started Rewind. In fact, you had just kind of re-entered into the fitness mm -hmm. and health industry after a, a hiatus. And uh, Long I mean, one. that's what it's not. And, and if, if there's a competition for best office slash studio, man, you're winning. <laughs> <laughs> you're can, winning. Everyone, can everyone hear, every, everyone who's, can they all see this or is this something? Uh, if, if people, if you can't see his backdrop, uh, go to the YouTube version of this interview. And, <laughs> and uh yeah. If I space out, it's because I'm looking at the back of future, um, oh, poster, oh, yeah. uh, the rampage game behind you. Uh, yeah. He's got old school yeah. video games. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a cool space. Game. Yeah. No, once it, I, it was uh, mine as a kid too. Yeah. yeah. Once I settle a little bit in, into an area, I think I'm going to build out something like that. But, uh, man, so let's, let's do this for Ryan, for people who don't 
who don't know who you are, because uh, you've been in the mm-hmm. industry for a long time. Um, you've consulted so many people. You have um, really kind of shifted the landscape of marketing within the industry as well. Um, give us give us some of your backstory. Yeah, um, yeah shift. I I've shifted in good, and then I guess in some ways bad. Um, it, I started uh, back. And I don't know how much this was covered previous, but I'll, I'll assume no one's ever heard of me or, or listened to the past one. Um, okay. I started when I graduated college and I started working in a children's hospital in 1994. And uh, I worked, it, it was um, f- physical rehabilitation. And I started doing fitness with them and adapted aquatics. But on the side, I was doing private training for young athletes. That was my specialty. And all through college, I, was, I ran on the track team. I was captain of my track team and I loved training. So I, I specialized mostly in speed too, like speed and agility training. And I was working out of gyms and I was hustling. I mean, I was hustling before there was hustle, uh, doing, going to figure skating places. I was training these elite figure skaters. I still don't even know how to skate. I don't know how I got away with that one. Um, <laughs> luckily it was all off ice. Um, I trained USTA ten, tennis players. Um, I, I, I'd go to gyms and set up sports, sports training programs and, on the side. So this was now, I was doing this for a few years. Fast forward to about end of 98, early 1999. Like, you know what? I'm doing these little private speed clinics. Maybe I could have a website set up to promote my training. Hmm. And, you know, this is 20 years ago. You, it, yeah. It's not like it is now. There was no Facebook. There was no social media. It was nothing. So I had to get a, a page built. I, I bought front page 98, which was like 200 bucks at the time. It took me two weeks. I still couldn't even set the damn thing up. I gave my little 12-year-old neighbor, Jonathan, $20 and he helped me set it up. And I was off to the races. It was one of the first sites in the world to talk about sports training. And that's why I figured. I, I kind of had this, this intuitive marketing brain where I'm like, let me just write articles. You couldn't do videos at the time and everyone had dial up. Even pictures were too slow. So I started writing a lot of articles and things just started happening. I started getting emails. I'll never forget. And I got an email like a week after I launched a site from a, um, an athlete in Japan saying, could you write me a training program? So to make money, I started selling sports training equipment. I had a deal with a company called Kitech. We sold um, medicine balls, resistance trainers, all this kind of stuff. I would get the order through the internet. This is how long ago it is, Eric. I'd get the order. It, it's insane. I, yeah. through, I got a free shopping cart. I'd get the order. I'd print it out. Um, I went to the bank and the bank gave me, remember those machines with, with the carbon, where you go, you kind of ring it yeah, through. Yeah, yeah, the carbon, the carbon slider thing. Copy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had that in my house and I and do that. I get the carbon copy. I go to the bank, deposit it. It would be in my account two days later. And then I would ship the products out. I would call the company. I say, here's the order. And then they would ship it out. Bizarre uh, how it worked. <laughs> and it, it did well. And, I, and then I made a connection with the NSCA, the National Strength Conditioning Association. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, I'm in the NSCA. Uh, I'm, I'm a CSCS. Can I host a webpage for the state chapters on my site because there's no, you know, there was no sites. No one even had email addresses at this time. Yeah. And they said, sure. And I started hosting sites and started making connections with all these strength coaches. And, and that was like the very, very beginning. And then I hired a, a young trainer out of Canada who was helping me design all these training programs because I couldn't do it on myself. And he's become pretty well known, Craig Ballantyne. Yeah. Um, so things just started to grow from there. And I, about, uh, a couple, I you know, made some money here and there. A couple of years later, I, I took all that content, made it a paid membership site, and that's where things really took off. And then I started speaking at Perform Better, um, started really connecting with all these amazing strength and conditioning coaches from Mike Boyle and Alan Cosgrove from the beginning and Eric Cressy when he was still in college. <clears throat> and then everyone's asking me, well, Ryan, you've done all this great stuff online. Could you teach me the business? I'm like, sure, I'll talk about business. It's fine. And yeah. then you know, a few years later, all of a sudden, I'm known as like the fitness marketing guy, which that wasn't my intention. And, you know, I just kind of rolled with it. And then I started teaching general entrepreneurship. And now, um, so I left kind of teaching fitness stuff at least a decade ago. Uh, by the time I had my fourth kid, you know, the extra chicken fingers uh, off the plates start adding up. <laughs> um, and, and just a lot of things, a lot of stuff, like good stuff, a lot of bad stuff happened. And my health started to decline. I was diagnosed with autoimmune disorder. I'm like, I can't teach fitness anymore. And I, I finally, a couple of years ago, turned it around. And I'm like, I'm down to the same weight I was in high school and college, the same waist size. I'm like, I could do this. I could help other people my age. And now after a decade, I'm back. I, I just sold my, I had a big entrepreneurial training company called Freedom, F-R-E-E-D-Y-M. I just sold that as of this recording uh, three weeks ago. Wow. So I don't have any entrepreneurial programs now. I'm just I'm just back doing fitness and, and talking about health and have a nutrition bar and just, I'm just playing again. So, uh, here we are. 
Yeah. Wow. That's really good. So, <laughs> so going through all that, I mean, I, I'd be curious to hear how you overcame the autoimmune. Was it, you know, was it more rest changes in nutrition? Like how, how did you? Yes, overcome? yes. And yes, it yeah. was, um, the, well, it was, no one really knows. Right. And it took, it took months to get diagnosed. I went to every doctor. I went to physical therapist and I, I was getting pain in my feet. So I went to a podiatrist. I went to an orthopedic guy. I went to my general practitioner, mm-hmm. went to chiropractor. No one could figure it out until the, um, the rheumatologist looked and immediately knew it. Uh, room, it was called, it's called, um, uh, psoriatic arthritis. And he wanted to immediately put me on chemotherapy. And Whoa. I said, no, yeah, this methotrexate, which is a really powerful drug. And I said, wow. no, well, I knew autoimmune. I mean, my master's exercise physiology. I have a baseline knowledge of this stuff. I'm like, well, it's, it's, it's inflammation. It's got to be, if something's causing it. He said, nope, we don't know what causes it. We just have to kill basically all your cells. Mm-hmm. I said, no, that's not an option. I'm going to figure it out. Um, so I knew with inflammation, the big things were going to be stress and nutrition. And yeah. that's what I really focused on is trying to simplify everything, simplify my routine. I stopped immediately. I stopped traveling. No more traveling. I haven't I don't speak at events. I used to speak all the time. People used to ask me to speak. And so I don't do any of that. I haven't done that in years. Um, and just start to simplify my business and, and really focus on my wife and my kids and, and nutritionally, just really paying attention to what I'm eating. And starting with the morning, I knew I'm busy. And in the morning, I don't have a lot of time for stuff. I tried smoothies. I don't have freaking time for smoothies. So that's, that's what set me to create a bar. I couldn't find a good bar. Every bar had, a lot of them had whey protein. And the way with the dairy can cause inflammation. A lot of them had sugar or sugar alcohol, which I didn't want, or artificial sweetener. So that was it. I mean, I, I just created this to kind of help me. And gradually the symptoms started to go away. And um, it's, it's, this is years ago. And I feel, I feel amazing now. Am, am I 100%? No. Sometimes it's weird. I could, I could sense when the weather's coming, when the rain's coming, I start to feel it in my joints a little bit. Wow. Um, and sometimes my joints feel a little stiff. If I have, a, if I have some pizza one night, the gluten, sometimes it b- kind of bothers me, but better than being on the drugs. And I, f- I feel great. So, uh, I'm, I'm probably at like a 90, I would never say I'm a hundred percent, but I'm like 95%. So, yeah. uh, yeah, I just, I just found a way. That, that's great, man. I mean, it's the autoimmune issues are so frustrating because, um, you know, they're not really fully understood. No, you know, we know it, it comes down to kind of the basic fundamentals of, of, you know, good lifestyle hygiene, uh, for right. the most part is a good place to start, but you, know, you get frustrated because you bust, you just go from doctor to doctor to doctor and, uh, and they don't know. And, know. and they don't know. The problem is the drug that they want to give me just treats the symptoms, yes. but okay. But what about what's causing it? And yes. it's like, and I, and I, I don't blame the doctors because that's what they're, t- I mean, they're doing what they're taught. They're taught, here's this, here's the thing. What do you prescribe to get rid of their pain? They're not taught, well, here's the thing, what's causing it? Um, so I don't blame them. I'm not angry with the, I'm not one of these, you know, all the doctors are trying to kill you. They're not, they're trying to help, but they're just, they're not kind of in tune with this. They don't take nutrition courses. Um, I remember with my master's degree, I took a bunch of nutrition courses and I would, I worked at the children's hospital. I had doctors, I'll never forget this. I had one of the doctors there. Um, one of the physicians, she was a physical medicine doctor, an MD, and was asking me about nutrition. I'm like, and here I was, like a 25 year old. I'm like, what do you mean? You're you're a doctor. She's like, we don't learn any of this stuff. I'm like, yeah. Really? <laughs> She's yeah. Like, Nothing. Uh, she had no idea. Uh, and that was really eye opening at the time. But yeah, the food still is the best medicine. Um, and we know, like everyone listening to this is is a health and fitness and wellness professional in some way. It's really it's really really simple. It's not easy but it's simple. Um, and one of my longtime friends, one of my very first clients, Alan Cosgrove, who I still stay in touch with, I'll never forget this. It had to be 15, 20 years ago. We we're talking about nutrition. And I said, well, what's, what's the secret? He said, he said, if everyone just had like a good piece of seafood with lots of fresh vegetables for like every meal, oh, all the sickness and illness would go away. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you know what? You're right. Like you're, you're absolutely right. Um, yeah. so I'm just trying, I'm just trying to help people. I'm not, uh, preaching one thing or another. And, Everyone's going to do their own thing. And there are some people like, I'm keto or I hate keto or I mm-hmm. do this. I do. I'm like, what, if something works for you and you're happy and healthy, you can stick to it. You feel good. That's great. Like, cool. Do you want to have my bars? Great. If you don't, that's fine too. Whatever works for you makes you happy because that's, uh, you know, if we're talking about kind of the business or positioning, what you don't want to do is go in there and be this aggressive. You're wrong. This is what you're doing is wrong. Cause then people just resist and they push back, especially with, with fitness and nutrition, my God, it's uh, it's right up there with 
with politics. Yeah. <laughs> you, you almost, you know, people get very defensive about what they're doing. Uh, and yeah. if you like that, if you want to have cold water, if you want to have a glass of cold water in the morning, great. If you want to have warm water in the morning, it works for you. Great. Like, <laughs> cool. Yeah. 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 yeah Whatever it's, the, it's the dogma. Right. I mean, it's, it's this dogmatic thing that you feel like you have to, and, and, you know, I've talked about this on previous shows. Like I, I came in as a CrossFit guy. So, mm. you know, if you asked me my first five years within my fitness and health career, uh, I would have told you CrossFit and paleo will fix everything. And that's yep. all you need. And it was funny cause I was bantering a little bit online with, uh, Rob Wolf and he, I remember when, uh, I held a seminar at paleo, <laughs> I had a, a held a paleo seminar at my gym and it was a challenge and all these things. And, uh, I remember there was a vegan there hmm. and, uh, everything I said, he was raising his hand and just shooting mm-hmm. it down. I, I, and I was like, God, you know, I didn't really have good answers for those questions. So I, back, this was like 2009. So I, I messaged Rob Wolf. I was like, Hey, uh, I'm like, what do, what do I do? And he gave me the answer. And he's, he's like, but just understand. And I'll probably tick off some people on this. He's like, vegans are like the jihadists of the nutrition world. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's always stuck with me. But then I was like, well, that's just dogma. It's just one dogma versus the other. Right. right. It's necessary. We all want the same thing. We want better health. We want people to find something sustainable. Right. And correct for them. Yeah. And you can't. And here's the thing. And, we, and we've all done. We've all gone down, down this road as health and fitness professionals. We try to argue it. And yeah. here's here's what I've learned in doing this for 24, 25 years now. God, 25 years um, <laughs> is that you can't win because no matter what you say, no matter what you do, they're going to find something. And someone who thinks they know it all too is going to find a study and yep. they're going to cherry pick and they're going to say, well, you know, vegan and this. And, and, and then someone's going to say, well, you shouldn't, you shouldn't go vegan because it actually is worse for the environment. And say, well, according to this study, it's a, you, you can't win. You, you, you absolutely cannot because you can always find a counter argument for everything. I'm convinced of that. Double blind placebo. I don't care. Take your research and shove it. It doesn't matter. Hey, if vegan works for you and you're happy, that's great. Go, go with it. Cool. I'm not going to try to convince you. Otherwise, you just take that position and people stop being so angry. When we do our, our Facebook ads for our bars, or <clears throat> it's, it's crazy because our bars are vegan. They're gluten-free. There's no artificial sweeteners, um, no artificial flavors, no fillers, non-GMO. It's made with real greens and fruits, all this good stuff. I'm like, who, what are you going to say? Right? Yeah, right. Who's going to argue with that? We're, we're, yeah. Well, man, was I wrong. You know, <laughs> first, first, the keto people. Well, it's too many carbs. It's going to do this. It's going to off balance. And one person yeah. gets angry. I can't believe you put strawberries in there. I'm allergic to strawberries. Said, what? Like, what? <laughs> I, <laughs> you do this without cashew butter. I don't want cashews. I want to be healthier. I, you, you just cannot win. So you do the best you can. I say, sorry, you don't like cashews. This is what it is. And we're just not right for you. That's cool. Go find something else or find someone else. It's fine. Yeah. Um, and then they just go instead of fighting back. Um, it's, it's so much easier. And, you know, we talk about positioning and all, you know, it, the, the CrossFit, there's that old thing, you know, how do you know if someone's CrossFit, if they don't do CrossFit? Well, don't worry, they're going to tell you in the yeah, next 10 seconds. talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember when CrossFit first came out online, when Glassman came out with this thing, I'm like, oh, what's this? This is interesting. Um, and if you love it, it works for you, cool. And if not, that's fine too. But uh, you can't just, Everyone relax. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. you do your thing and you talk about what you love and what's great. But when you start putting down the other stuff and the other people, there, there's something to be said, okay, you, want, you draw the line and saying this is what we believe in, this is what we don't. But I think focus more on what you believe in and why you like it as opposed to trying to always attack the other side. Mm-hmm. And I've been guilty of that. Sometimes we go overboard and we attack the other side when the more I've done this, the more I've learned, it just doesn't work. All it does is upset the other people. So don't even worry about them. Just focus on the people who get it. And, and state your point. Uh, you don't have to say it's better than anything else. Say, this is what we believe. We believe this works. We believe our transformation system or our program or our kettlebell system or our nutrition or our paleo or keto, this works. This works for us. This works for our tribe. You want to come in, join, cool. And if not, there's some other people that you can go follow and that's good. Yeah. yeah. It takes all the pressure off. It, t- it takes, it takes um, you out of the having to out-hype everybody else and having to out do them and overdo them because everyone's screaming, ours is the best, ours is the best, everything else sucks. And yeah. then you just sound like Archie Bunker. Yeah. If anyone could remember Archie Bunker. Yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, Ryan, I, and I realized this a while ago, is that the more you learn, the more you educate yourself within this field, the more you realize that you don't know shit. And that kind of, you know, there's like too much to know. 
So it's you almost like when you learn your ego gets smaller. And you're like, ah, you know what? Maybe the only crash, the only real good answer to most questions is, well, it depends. And, and that's the answer to life too, right? Yeah. Um, every, the answer almost always with everything is somewhere in the middle. It, right. it always is. Uh, there's, always, there's always a way to, to spin things, and, but it, it, really, it really does depend on so many factors. Like we can all agree on certain things. Like if you're every morning, you're freaking chasing down a line of cocaine with a bottle of whiskey, probably not the best thing for your yeah. health, right? Yeah. Um, we could, there's some things we, we kind of know for sure. Uh, but for, for the little things um, and being back, you know, now since our talk six or seven months ago to now being six or seven months in a deep and really back in this space and seeing the response and, and having thousands, thousands of new customers and interacting with them on a daily basis and seeing all their responses, it reminds me of um, kind of where the general population is and how much also right now the kind of general tone, at least in states, is very, everyone's like on edge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's almost like this kind of civil war going on. So just trying to be the, the, the voice of reason. Um, I mean, my whole, our whole nutritional philosophy that I have, it's, as you can see behind me, everything is like kind of fun and retro in eighties. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's the 1980s philosophy. It's eat the good stuff 80% of the time and 20% do whatever the heck you want. Just do like the 80, 20 Pareto's principle, just do that and you'll be fine. Like, don't stress about it. That's, that's our overall philosophy. And um, it tends to work for us. It takes the pressure off and it works for our people. And if you don't believe in that, and if you want to be hundred percent strict and you say, I'm paleo, I could never have something that they didn't have in the paleolithic era. Although I doubt they had donuts in the paleo, cause I've seen paleo donuts. I don't <laughs> think they had a donut shop in the paleo era, but Hey, if that's your thing, cool. Um, and you want to be hundred percent and be really, really strict and you could stick with it. And you love it. Yeah. Great. Um, but that's not us. Yeah. Awesome. And, and so Ryan, I'm, you are the marketing guy. I mean, you, you've been known as the marketing guy within the industry. And I've actually seen really good people uh, leave the industry in the, lap, in the past few years and just kind of go into mm-hmm. something else because their frustration of what the marketing is nowadays, you know, mm-hmm. how it's evolved and all that. So, I mean, I can't imagine a better person to ask than you of, you know, having gotten started literally when it was just called internet marketing and you know, there yeah. was no cell phones, right? That was kind of no. when you got started no email campaigns, no nothing. We had beepers. You've seen it change, right? Yeah. And what do you, how, give us some insights on your thoughts on the evolution of, of marketing within the fitness industry. And then, you know, what's your take on it now? Well, yeah. So when I first started, it was, it was essentially taking old school direct marketing methods and just putting them online. So it was mm-hmm. what used to work in old direct marketing, Gary Halbert era, if anyone knows who that is. Um, was a long form sales letter. You get a sales letter, you have a big, bold headline, you, you fold it up, you put it in an envelope, you send it out, and hopefully 1% of the people respond and you get rich. So what we did online, because there was no video and none of that stuff, you, that's, just, that's exactly what we did. We took a long form sales letter and put it online. And for a long time, that worked. And then from there, from that general framework, we started adding a technology. Well, now you can do audio. And there was a thing called audio generator. You could add a little audio button and you could hear things. Oh my God, and that improved conversion. Then YouTube came out and then you could do video and embed video. And now people have um, you know, high-speed internet. Now they can watch a video. That improved. And then forget the copy. Let's do a video sales letter. Mm-hmm. And that improved. And then not just do a video sales letter with PowerPoint, let's do one with animated drawings. And, that, and everything just kind of kept going and going and going. But what happens is, and I used to teach a lot of those methods. I mean, that's what I did. That's what we all did because there was nothing else to do really. Um, but what happened was those stopped working because the market starts becoming more sophisticated. Because back then you saw that and there was no social media. And if you saw someone say, hey, how to get bulletproof abs in six days, you kind of believed it. Um, yeah. and some people, even if they know it's not true, they want to believe it anyway, but you couldn't go on Facebook. You couldn't look up the person. You couldn't find anything. You, so you didn't know if it was real, legit or a scam or what it was. Um, but what happened was I think first a bunch of marketers started to look at it as a game and they started to forget about the human beings buying it. And it was just about the money and the numbers and what's your CPA, how much are you making per click? And they, they forgot about the human beings on the other side of it. Um, and I think people started feeling like they were being taken advantage of. Um, yeah. Okay. As a marketer. So, so the trend was 
you get as much as you can right there in the sale. So you, you sell a low price product and then you crush them with upsells. Upsell, upsell, downsell, downsell, upsell, downsell. And then you get them on a list. And then you have all your buddies in this circle and everyone's promoting each other. You promote me, I promote you. So now they get on this list and they see you every day. You're promoting another program. Well, buy Eric's program, buy Joe's program, buy John's program. It's bet. And then they don't believe you anymore. They don't trust you. And everyone started to do that. And then everyone's like skeptical now. I don't believe anyone. So the trend now is getting away from that because what happens, you burn out your list, you burn out the relationship. And the trend now is just getting back to get rid of all that crap and just be a real human being. Just stop trying to do this. Stop trying to be all the, all the hype stuff. And it, here's, it was really, really interesting. So last week I did a mastermind and it was a, it was a small group. There was like six or seven of us. And three of the guys were in the fitness industry and they all for the past two years had been doing that method of aggressive sales copy. One, one guy, and he's like the sweetest guy. And I see this copy. It's like, you're ma- you know, your wife looks like crap because after the baby, but blah, 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 like, oh, so and I'm, I'm talking I'm like, you wrote this? Like this isn't, you know, because what happened is they got these initial spike of sales and then everything starts doing that because they have to promote everyone else. And it's this endless cycle and people don't believe them anymore. So they came to me to, to like, Brian, just, we need you to help us fix it. So I got rid of, I said, basically, first thing I do is, is take down all that crap. And I told them ahead of time, you're not coming to spend a couple of days with me until you agree that we're going to change everything. Cause I can't work with you ethically to sell that stuff. Yeah. So we said, we're scrapping all that. Let's start with the top and build a brand. Let's mm-hmm. build a real brand, a real sustainable brand. Let's have all the products fall underneath that. And let's stop with all the bull and let's just start getting real and start telling people the truth and let's transform this. So that thankfully there's a new crop of people that are try- that are kind of going in that way. And the people who are most successful are doing that now. And the old school people who are still holding on to the old ways of doing things, the, the hardcore affiliate stuff and 100% commissions and upsells and upsells, they make a little bit of money short term, but they never last long term because the churn is too high. So they're either going to have to evolve or they're going to leave. And, and a lot of them, as you said, have left because they can't make money anymore because it's getting, it's getting more expensive to acquire customers. And they're not building long-term value because what happens is what, when it used to cost $5 to acquire a customer, now it's $20. So if it used to cost five and you could squeeze 18 out of them, um, okay, short-term, so you make a little bit of money, but now when it costs 20 and you could squeeze 18 and they're never buying stuff again, you're losing money and they're gone. And fi- yeah. the health of fitness is too competitive. Um, the reason we, so for every dollar we spend right now, we get back $1.70 because we're not, we're not killing them. We're yeah. just taking care of them. And, and we have 75% of our customers are coming back and buying more because we're just treating them the right way. And it's just, it's so simple. So I've seen the evolution. So, and hopefully the ones who are the old school aggressive start to kind of die off because people see through it. The, the market's become more sophisticated. They're onto their games. And the new breed, the people who are just, I'm just going to give and share and here to serve people are going to succeed, and especially long-term. That's the reason why still I'm around you know, 20 years, 20 years later. And a lot of my, my, I guess, competitors or colleagues at the time, they're gone. I don't, some of them, I don't even know if they're still, I don't know what happened to them. I really don't know because you look them up and they've disappeared. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's, I, I, I think if you're not being real and honest and ugh, the word is so overused authentic, but it just means don't be a, don't be a D, right? Just, <laughs> that's it. Just, be a real person. Um, even here, we do all our fulfillment from this from this facility here, and we film real videos. We show them our inventory. We're not hiding anything. And when we do Facebook ads, I answer every single comment, good and bad. I don't delete anything, nothing. Uh, and so few people do that. They're they because they because they build everything on a bed of lies and hype. And thankfully, Facebook and Google is they're catching on, and they're they're not allowing those people to play anymore either. Um, I was actually, I spoke at a, at a high level mastermind event and the guy spoke right before me and he's a guy I've known for a long time. He's one of my clients 15 years ago. Now he's just kind of charges 25 grand and sales letters and his whole thing is, you know, oh, Facebook is banning all of us. So now our ads have to be really boring and vanilla. I'm like, no, they're, now they're human. Like Facebook, they just want to deliver. They don't want people to feel like, feel bad about it. They don't want people to come on the old Dan Kennedy way of sales copy and twisting the knife. Facebook doesn't allow that anymore. Hmm. So you can't do that. Um, so you have to find alternative traffic sources. So just, just do the right thing anyway. 
um, so much easier. And you get better people. Um, even if you don't get as many, you get better, better loyal people. So that's, yeah. that's where I see it going. It, 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 but that takes work, right? It takes time. It yes takes and no. Client. It takes, uh, you know, it's not 90 days. It's, it's to build it's a long-term, really, to build, okay, um, to build a long-term relationship takes longer. Yes. Um, yes, and, well, yes, it does. But if you, if you are, um, if you're consistent with your messaging, it actually isn't that long. I mean, we've only, we've only, we only launched this brand seven months ago. We have thousands and thousands of loyal customers, people that are wearing our t-shirts, um, loving the brand. When are you coming out with new bars? They're voting on flavors. Like they are all in with Rewind. It, it hasn't taken us years. Um, because from, from every single email, every message is always the same consistency. Our brand is fun. It's just, they feel like I've never let them down. And I never all of a sudden said, oh, you got to buy this guy's six pack abs program because I owe him or I'm getting a better commission. Um, so we're doing it the right way. So it, it does take a little bit of time, but it's actually, um, it's actually much easier because you don't have to overthink. So I'll give you an example. Probably my most successful student, his name is Jeff Cav- Cavalier. Um, a lot of people know him. He created a company called Athlean X. Hmm. And he has now 7 million subscribers, eight-figure business. He, he started with me about eight, nine years ago in a small mastermind group. We came up with Athlean X and kind of building it out. And from the beginning, it's like, it's going to be one brand. He is not going to do the affiliate game. He's not going to do hype. And even yet, he came to my little mastermind here and gave a talk a couple of days ago and said, um, I don't do any of those crazy funnels. None. I said, it, I never did and I never will. He's like, I have the video on YouTube and for anyone, whatever they're marketing, maybe it's a YouTube video, maybe it's Instagram, maybe it's Facebook, maybe it's a podcast, whatever that marketing thing is, getting them to your site and here's my product. And that's it. That's been his whole funnel. He doesn't go to all these crazy hack funnel events and you got to do 15 videos and oh, the video, you know, you have to do this 75 sequence if they watch eight minutes of your video, but if they watch nine minutes, it means they're much more interested. So what, do these 17 videos. People, the marketers do that to overwhelm you. So you're like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. And they go, well, <laughs> 25 grand, you join my mastermind, we'll show you everything. Yeah. Um, and you know, that's not true. They don't anyway. You get 30 seconds on the hot seat. Um, and they say, basically promote everyone else. So, but the reality is when you do it right, we don't have a complex funnel at all. It's, you come into our world, if, if you try some of our bars for free and you pay a small shipping fee, we have one up, so hey, do you want a box at a discount? Yes, cool. If not, no, there's no down sell. That's fine. Now you're on our list and now I email our list a couple times a week. Always upbeat, motivational, fun, personal. It's never like about what to eat, what not to eat. It's just inspirational stuff. And that's it. That's our funnel. That's our system. That's the whole thing. And it's really, really simple. It is. You just got to keep going. And you you got to be consistent. And knowing that even now, I know the profits really aren't going to come for a while, but I'm okay with that. Like right now, we're just building and building and establishing relationships. Yeah. Um, and it does, you, but you do have to, definitely have to look at it long term. I probably could have made more money short term if I immediately came out with, and, and things I'll never do is a fat burning pill. You know, oh, we, we went to this mountain in the Appalachian mountains. <laughs> we, we found a tribe and every person was 180 years old and it was because this magic herb. So we slaughtered the tribe just to give you these pills, $59 <laughs> a month. Um, you could probably make more money with Garcinic, Cambodia, like all this crap. Um, yeah. But I'll never do that. And my audience knows I'll never do that and sell them out and, and lie to them for money. So we could have probably made another $300,000 doing that, but I would never do it. And I'm, sacri- I'm willing to sacrifice short term for the long term brand. You know, it's, it's funny. I'm listening to you talk and you never guess that you're talking about a product, right? That you're talking about a bar. You would think you're talking about like this community, this, you know, almost like a service mm-hmm. or, you know, high ticket item. But mm-hmm. so, so talk to me about it's that. It's a $3 bar. Yeah. <laughs> how, how do you, how, what is the client? experience like with, with your product? Well, it's not just with, it's not even about us and our product. It's that whatever it is you do, your company, your brand, it's a feel, it's a vibe and whatever you're selling, whatever the product is, that's, that's, that's like the surface level. That's not really the thing, especially if you're selling a lot of fitness professionals are selling, they want to sell digital eBooks to do online trading. Yeah. 
it's, it's got to go beyond. It's an eight week program. It's a four week program. It's a kettlebell program. It's a pellet. It's got to go beyond that and, and go levels deeper. And, um, and that's what we're trying to do. We're, we're here to impact life. We're, we're the company. We're not a nutrition company or a health bar company or any. We're just, we're a happiness company. We want people to be happy and feel better. Like that's all we're trying to do. So the bar is just one way. And if it wasn't, if the bar didn't work, it would have been another product. Maybe it was a skincare product. Maybe it was a supplement. Maybe it was um, a green drink. It, it, it almost doesn't matter in a way. Um, and I think what happened, if we're, if we're kind of taking a step back for a minute, what happened yeah. with the whole online marketing space is I think fitness professionals along the way started to confuse a product with a company, right? Um, a product, so six-week abs is a product. It's not really a company. Right. Um, you know, the six-week, eight-week transformation is a product. It's not a company. What's the co- So Jeff Cavalier, the company, the brand is Athlean X. AX1 is, this, is one program. AX2, Beast, what, like these are programs and products under the brand. And what happened is we, we started creating 50 different products and every product had its own URL. And then what happened is, well, all the social media. Now every URL has to have its own social media. And now I have to do Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest for, for one brand, for two brands, for three products, for four brands. And all of a sudden you're, you're running like a chicken, your head cut off and you're listening to Gary Vaynerchuk. Oh, you got to be everywhere. You got to keep grinding. And then you burn out. You get no traction because it's really hard to get traction now. It's just a lot of noise. Yeah. So you got to go deeper than just buy my product or six pack ads. It's got to go deeper than that. And, and I think sometimes all of our messages are about the product and you have to think, what else do people do? Who's your audience, right? Our audience um, tends to be, it, we're mostly 35 to about 60, um, probably about 70% female. Um, so we know that's our audience. So what do we talk about? What else do they like to do? Well, a lot of them have kids. A lot of them have families. So what else can we talk about? The daily stuff going on. What, if, you're, if you're 45, like me, well, I'm going to be 47, but you kind of grew up in the 80s. Like if I, if I mentioned, you see the posters behind me, Back to the Future, everyone in my age demographic knows what I'm talking about. So knowing who you're talking to and talking about things beyond just the product. I think that's where you have to get beyond. And that's why it's working well for us because we're really building a community and highlighting our members. Every email is not just about Ryan and how great he is, although there is. Um, no, but it's, it's not about that. <clears throat> it's all we do is highlight. We have a rewinder of the day and we take all of our testimonials and we, we highlight one of our members in our community. And we're talking to them, interacting, and they're part of the company and they know and we're always taking them along, <clears throat> along the journey. Even with our next bar flavor, we put a whole survey in our private Facebook group. What flavor do you want next? And one flavor that I put in there I kind of did it as a throwaway. I said, coconut chocolate chip, because that's what I would like. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, that's not going to be number one. I mean, that was number one by far. And that's the flavor. With, and we just got our second uh, round of test products. And it's amazing. And people cannot wait because they felt like they were part of the process. Um, so just, man, man, treat everyone on your list. It's, they are, they're, treat them like your family, your tribe. Um, even my my whole family, my, my dad, my sister, my cousins, people I went to high school with that I've known my whole life, they're all on my email list. So when I write an email, I'm not writing an email, I'm writing a letter. That's it. Um, and that's, that's where you have to get to. And when you, can, when you take that combination of your heart and truly, truly creating stuff to serve people and you combine it with the smarts, the marketing, okay, what's going to be a good le- headline? What's going to be a good hook? What's a good call to action? Um, what's a good pricing model and strategy? When you combine the two, you can't lose. Unfortunately, most marketers are only taught or teaching the, the funnel stuff. Right. And they're forgetting the heart's almost an after, you know, ah, don't worry about that. That's, you know, forget that. And then because the sexy stuff is all, oh, you hear about that new countdown clock? Oh my God, you could bet it in email and it, you know, and if someone clicks on it, the link expires automatically and blah, blah. What? No, that's not, that's not, you don't need that stuff. If you're doing it the right way, you don't need any of that. And that's not stuff you should be focusing on at all. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, ultimately you have to solve a problem too. I mean, the value has to be there. And that's, yeah. uh, and that's, that's the biggest thing. Absolutely. Skip right over that is like, you know, I'm so tired, Ryan, of, of the 90 day, whatever, 90 day, anything, 
right? It's like well, transformation, <laughs> transformations. You know, my God, seven Enough figures with the in ninety days. Everyone. Yeah, you yeah. Know, uh-huh. seven figure funnel, the eight figure funnel, the yeah, all these things. And uh, you know, I'm I'm really keen on just relationships in general. You know, just just actually having conversations with people, find out what they want, what they need, what their problems are, how you can help them, and just going out and, and offering value. I, I think. You know, for me personally, this is my journey, you know, since selling my gym, you know, I was a little bit lost for the first year. I'm like, I didn't know what I was going to do in the fitness industry. I know I want to stand. I know I want to have a bigger role, right? I didn't know how that value is going to come in. And I I did all the same things. You know, I started a digital marketing agency that we still have. It's boutique, but we started, you know, started doing funnels, started doing all these things. And, uh, but it always felt off, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, in your gut when something feels a bit off and I think people need to follow their gut a little more often. And one thing I always found was like, you know, if I'm talking to enough people, um, I'm understanding what the problems are. Um, and I'm just building relationships that you can't go wrong there. And, uh, that's just listen, just, just listen, even on our Facebook ads. Um, so when we're reformulating, so we have our flavor original and then we're doing a second flavor. So the initial, so you, you have to listen and pivot right? You have to be willing to pivot and you can't get emotionally attached to one thing in one idea. Perfect example. So that, and that's why I was so excited to build this new company because I could, I could build again and roll up my sleeves. I guess ego-wise, I'm like, I want to prove that I still got the chops, but I really wanted to do something that was going to serve and, and something that was going to be fun. Um, but coming in, the idea, my initial idea was, we'll have one bar, one nutritional supplement, one thing, like just, it was going to be very focused, but it was only going to be one bar. That was the idea. We created the super bar. You can't get any better than that. But we kept getting emails, messages. I love it, but I want a little change of pace. Do you have a new flavor? New flavor. We kept getting that over and over. Any of the other flavors, we'd love to see a new flavor. I'm like, okay, they want a new flavor. And the other thing we were getting back was the people who didn't buy it um, was too many carbs. Too many carbs, too much sugar, because now sugar is, I guess, poison. I guess if you have one gram of sugar, you're automatically going to like die and, and be you know, 750 pounds yeah. because we can't, I guess our, our human beings cannot process even, they, we can't even look at sugar, uh, you know, and, and they use it, oh, it's like mice, it's, it's like cocaine, it's like ridiculous, come on. <laughs> um, so, but, but we're listening, okay, so we, re, so we said we're going to come up with a new flavor and as we're doing it, we lowered the sugar count. So right now, the, the new flavor, it's only going to have four grams um, because we're listening to people and we're smart enough to say, we're just going to give people what they want. We're not going to compromise our values. And it's fine. If we, and we figured out a way to lower the sugar and to change some of the ingredients, to change the formulation and change the thing. So um, being not getting too tied to one idea and being smart enough to move fast and pivot when you have to. And that's the key. And, and overcoming the resistance, because there's always going to be resistance. Even with this new flavor, we were getting, we had it, the way a bar works is you do it, you, you do a test kitchen, you get the samples. If everything goes well, nutritional facts, texture, taste, everything's good. Then you, you go again and then you run it through the larger equipment because you do hundreds of thousands of bars at a time. So you can't do it in a kitchen. So then, and that's the final test. So everything was great. Everything worked. And then we did it just, we just got the email actually yesterday through the big final test it, it was, it was because we used too many with dates. It was a little wet, the bar. So we need to, to kind of reformulate again. So it throws us off three or four weeks. Hmm. So what do you do? Do you just give up? Oh, you get annoyed for two seconds. Like, all right, that's cool. What do we have to do next? And you just have to keep moving through that resistance. And most entrepreneurs get upset. They get angry or they put their head, they stick their head in the sand where you just got to be prepared for it physically, mentally, emotionally. It's like training for, a championship boxing match, you have to be ready for it and you have to be ready to take the hits because it's going to come. It's going to be hard and you have to be resilient. That's it. You have yeah. to move with conviction and be resilient. Yeah. I, I, I love, I, and you know, ultimately people want that tactic, right? That's going to change everything, but it's not. It's just, it's fortitude, it's consistency, it's persistency through that time and just believing in what you're doing. And if you make enough mistakes, as long as you learn from them, it's a surefire way to win. You, you just have to move through them. Yeah, yes. don't repeat. Don't repeat the mistakes. Yes. Um, I will. I will tell you that it is everything, especially health and fitness online. It's getting so much more competitive. Yeah. Um, and if I if I'm going to give you one piece of advice in terms of branding or positioning, at this day and age, it's better to be different than better. If that makes sense, it's better to be different 
than better, right? Everyone's just trying to be better. Well, I have, I have a 10 week kettlebell program with hundred exercises. Well, mine's eight weeks with 400 exercises. Well, that's better. It's not necessarily different though. So, and that's where the real magic lies is, is figuring out how is, how are we going to make this, the, the product or at least the positioning of it different, right? How is it going to stand out and, and get some attention and still solve problems and still have profit margins and all the other stuff. But that's, that, that's where the trial and error comes in because we don't know. We, we don't know until we get it out there and put it out there. But if you wait for it to be perfect, it's never going to get out there anyway. So you got to get something out that, that's really good. Try it, move, pivot, keep trying new things. And eventually you're going to keep going until you get it. You're like, that's the thing. Like, that's it. And even when that works, then eventually it stops working. Okay, what's the other thing? And just, you keep moving forward and yeah. uh, you don't get stuck. Yeah. So you, we just touched on it really briefly and I'm, I'm dying because you've, you know, you've seen this evolution, especially in the online space of what fitness is and health and wellness. Um, you've seen the, the technology. I mean, you mentioned mm-hmm. it used to be like a, you know, dropping letters in the mail. Then uh-huh. you had a website. That was revolutionary. Then you started email marketing. That was revolutionary, mm-hmm. right? Um, things are changing so fast. I mean, it's not just fitness, it's just our lives, right? I mean, you yeah. look at, you know, we talk about, oh, well, when AI comes, no, AI is here. It's actually in your phone. You talk to it probably a right. couple times a day, right? Yeah. Um, but if you could, and I, I'm going to put a shorter term on this because it's, I do believe it's, let's say five years from now, man, um, how is the fitness industry going to look different in your opinion? Have you, I'm sure you think about this stuff, right? Like how is the technology, how is it, you know, is it, obviously applications, AI, who, who's going to benefit and who has to be where? I, you know, I think we've reached the point with, in technology where, look, think there's always going to be new technology and new AI. Um, but I, I think we've reached the point where we know, like here, with, well, people can't see, I'm holding up my phone, right? My iPhone. Yes. Um, we know on this phone, We've reached the point where we could know we pretty much get anything we need on it, right? Yeah. All the music we ever wanted, all the books, you know, ebooks, apps, maps, all that kind of stuff. All right, we get it. Um, so I think we've already reached that point. Now it's like, now how can I? I think people are almost craving an analog world. There's a reason physical book sales are up, there's a reason people are collecting records again, and not just. Gen X like me, I mean, my kids buy records. It's, I, I think we've reached that tipping point. Where we're like, okay, we get it. The digital stuff is cool, but I want a real connection. And I think there's always going to be a space and I don't know where it's going to go with AI, but what I see is that the stuff that works is still having, is, is kind of combining some of the technology if you need to, but still having the human connection. So I'll give you an example. If you think of the hottest fitness product right now. It's Palatin or however, however you pronounce it, pa- Palatin. And they do, they started with the bike, then they have the treadmill. Now they have just regular workout stuff. It's not about the bike or the app or the treadmill. They're like, oh, that's cool. If you actually listen to all of the testimonials and all of the people, and if you listen to interviews with the owner, and, what, and one of my friends is a private equity guy and invested about 20 or 30 million in the company. Um, if you actually listen, it's the people that, that rave about it talk about their instructor. Oh my God, I, I, I went on because Johnny is the best. And Johnny called me out and he said my name or Mary. And she, wore, she, you know, she mentioned my name and she said my birthday. It's, we're never going to lose that human touch and that connection. And that's why it works. And that's why Palatin pays those instructors so much money. And they don't just have a revolving, nameless, fameless, faceless instructor. It's real human beings. And that's because otherwise it wouldn't work. If it was just artificial. I remember when I was a trainer in in a gym 20 years ago, they had one of these bikes and it was like, you ride the bike and it it was a simulated, and it looks like on the screen, you're riding through the Alps or on a street thing. And people go on it like, oh, it's cool. It's a novelty. But it's, it never really, really took off. All that stuff I saw, oh, it's good. You, you put this DVD in and it's like you run. That never really took off. Palatin is the thing. I think it's working. I really think the big reason why it's working is because it's the human being. It's the instructor and you feel like you're connected. So I think what's going to happen is the, the fitness and health pros who double down on, on their personality and the relationship and the connection are going to win. And I think if you can start to combine that with some of the technology, um, even better, but not necessarily. So, and 
as long as the technology is easy to use. And I think sometimes we make it so complicated. And I remember going through all that phase and seeing all these guys, oh my God, you got to do this. And then there's 17 things you have to download and upload and all that. I'm like, people just want simple. So if I, I, I think we're almost kind of coming back. We're going to layer some of the technology on it, but I still think we're coming back to that relationship. When I first started, the big things, the, the online plays were, it was called e-fitness, e-nutrition, e-diets. It was like these big nameless, fameless, faceless things. Pod fitness didn't work because it what? Because the personalities weren't there. The things yeah. that work really well, like Athlean X with Jeff, it's because Jeff is the personality behind it. So as long as we don't lose touch of that, even if we build a brand and a company and an umbrella company, there should be a name and a face and a personality. And writing real emails and real messages and real connections and not just the good and not just the annoying pictures of you with your shirt off and showing your abs, but <laughs> this, is, this is me on a bad day. And man, I, I haven't worked out in two days and I feel like crap. How about you? I'm just like you. That's the stuff that people resonate with. Like, that's my guy or that's my girl. That's the person I relate with. And that's the person who I want to hang with. Yeah. Oh, well done. Well done. I'm going to leave it right. That was beautiful. So Ryan, I know we're, we're cutting short on time here and you, you got to run soon. So give us some insights, man. Um, just real quick. Like I want to know where, where do you see your business going uh, in the next few years? Uh, what's, what's the hope for it? And then where do people find out more about you? Yeah. Um, where does it go in this series? You know, I don't know. Uh, and this is where I, I personally struggled because there's a part and, and all my friends, I, I live here in New Canaan, Connecticut. Everyone's, you know, investment bankers, private equity, all this. Oh, you got to have an exit point. You have to have your five year goal. But, and then I, I'm in this little mastermind that I formed with three of, uh, three of my good friends. And they said, don't like, don't even just go and do what feels right and just build something that, that you enjoy building. So, cause Right now, my wife and my four kids are my priority. So I'm going to build it around them. I don't know where it's going to go. I do have an idea. I know what products we're going to create. I have an idea of what we're going to do for marketing um, in terms of specific revenue. I have no idea. Um, and I'm not, I'm not even thinking about it because every time you try to do a five-year plan, especially in today's environment, who knows? Yeah. I mean, I don't know where I'm going to be five hours from now. I'm car probably carpooling somewhere. Five years from now, I don't know. So I'm just going to keep growing and having fun. One of my clients, guy Justin, who's a brilliant 26-year-old entrepreneur, already has two multi-million dollar companies. Um, he had a great quote. We have lunch together. And I said, what, what do you like to... He said, I just want to chase the fun. Chase the fun. And I say that every day, all day. Whenever we're like, what should we do? Should we do this? Should I said, let's just chase the fun. And that's all I'm doing is chasing the fun and building. Of course, I'm going to keep an eye on the numbers. I'm going to look at the spreadsheets every day and look at the stuff, but we'll see where it goes. I just want to impact as many lives as possible, build a profitable company and feel good about it and, and have something that my kids, they love coming here and working and wearing the Rewind t-shirts and being part of it. So it's all good. Uh, if people do want to come and check it out, it's rewindtoday.com. Very simple. And on Facebook, Instagram at rewindtoday.com. And then, um, and you could just connect with me. I do a daily email, um, a daily business marketing email, my insights and all this like kind of quick hit stuff at ryanlee.com. And there's a, you could find a link there. I gave a talk at an event recently for a couple hundred entrepreneurs all about how to build this, this eight figure product line and brand. So that's R-Y-A-N-L-E-E.com. Very simple. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Ryan, thank you so much, man. Thank you for spending this hour, uh, with me and the listeners and, uh, I learned a lot. It was great perspective. And yeah, you inspired me quite a bit today. And well, I, I appreciate it. Well. No, it, it was fun. And uh, I just made everything up. So I hope everyone found value. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Right on. Ladies and gentlemen, Bye. Ryan Lee. Hey, fitness fans, don't leave yet. It's your host, Eric Malzone. And I have a quick favor to ask. Actually, three favors. So number one, if you're a fan of our show, I ask you to do something that takes under three minutes. Go to iTunes, please, and subscribe to our show. Please, please, please. It means so much to us. It's so important. And then give us a favorable review. We would really, really appreciate it. And uh, I can't tell you how much it means and helps us out. So I know it takes two minutes of your day and uh, it means a lot to us. So please do that. Number two, go to our YouTube channel or Fitness Marketing Alliance and uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel there. Number three, if you like this episode or any of the episodes that we've released, share it on social. That's huge. That's a big deal for us. And we put a lot of work into these episodes, uh, trying to give you great actionable content uh, for the fitness industry. So that would mean a lot. And that's it. 
So we have some big plans coming up for this show. I'll be talking about that in the next couple episodes, but thank you so much for listening. It means so much. And uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'd love to hear from everybody. Eric, E-R-I-C at fitnessmarketingalliance.com.